Hello, and welcome to the Frivolous and Frugal podcast. We are two sisters and a niece who share our fondness for knitting, the things that we create, and the love we have for the knitting community. And we do it all with a little twist of both the fearless and the frivolous and the frugal. <laughs> How's that for a change up? Whoa. Well, anyway, I am Dawn Frugal. Oh, I said frugal. I am frivolous, Dawn. <laughs> Take it back. Oh, deep yeah. down, you want to be frugal. Yeah, I was frugal once. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't enjoy it all. So. <laughs> of course you wouldn't have. Oh, my goodness. Oh, what an opening. And in the <laughs> family's birth order, I'm pretty sure I'm right. I am the fourth of eight children. <laughs> Go ahead, Miss um, Brianna. I'm fearless, Miss Brianna. Um, and I am the daughter of number seven in the family's birth order. <laughs> and would you say you're frivolous or frugal? Um, it depends on the day and who I'm with. <laughs> <laughs> you're a chameleon. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, I am. And hello, my name is Frugal Miss Penny, and I am the oldest of the eight. And we just want to give a shouty, a shouty. A hearty shout out. It is not starting out well today, ladies, just for the record. A hearty shout out for our returning viewers. We're so glad you're joining us again. And as always, we hope that you can glean something from our fiber frolics and our fiber adventures. And if this is your first time watching us, welcome aboard. The first part is not normally this obnoxious, but it just happened to start out that way today. Um, we hope you stick around and I am confident that you will learn something from the lessons that we've learned. So without further ado, grab your knitting, your favorite note-taking device, and a sense of humor because this is episode 69 of the Frivolous and Frugal podcast. Take it away, Dawn. Well, let's just go around and say what we're wearing. So what are you wearing, Miss Brianna? I am wearing The Hitchhiker by, um, what's her name? Martina Bame. Oh, or Martina Bame. 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 And you've seen this before. I knit this a long time ago, but I love it. I probably wear this one the most because um, it's cotton it's not too hot and um I love the colors and it was a kit it was one of those cakes that the color changes throughout um but I don't remember who it was by um what dyer but that's what I'm wearing well I'm sure your Ravelry project notes are up to date and people could look at that oh I'm, I'm sure <laughs> No, Brianna. I I just looked up your account the other day. It was abysmal. Zero. I know it was abysmal. Just for the record, like a ghost on Ravelry. I watch everything, but nobody can see me. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I am wearing Color Shift. It is a call by Karina Spencer. It is a free pattern on Ravelry. So how's that one on the frugalometer? Um, it's knit on a U.S. size 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. So the number of stitches you cast on stay the same through the whole cowl. You just keep um, increasing needle sizes throughout the pattern. And the other thing, and obviously you can't see it from here, you start holding two strands of fingering, and then at another point you pick up the third strand, and by the end you pick up the fourth strand. So not only is it growing as far as it's um, width, it's also growing in weight. So what I kind of like about having the four strands, it really sits nice and it stays put. Um, this is all uh, scraps I had or leftover bits and bobs. The only two I recorded was one color from Bruce City, which is an indie dyer in the Milwaukee area, and um, some hedgehog. So I have no idea what the other colors were. I knit in grays and blacks all the time. So I could probably knit six of these and nobody would be able to tell the difference. So great pattern if you wanna use scrappy projects. I think with, um, it seems like this time of the year when we're starting to make our shift toward um, more uh, autumnal knitting or um, heavier yarn since it's not, well, I'd like to say it's not quite so hot. It's still quite hot. Um, yeah, it's just a fun one. I wear it a lot because just that little warmth over my shoulders 
once in a while helps. So um, yeah, you can find that on my Ravelry project notes. Ladies, what a novel <laughs> thought. Just wow. <laughs> and what is your Miss, uh, Miss uh, Opal wearing there, Penny? I have no idea because I forgot to look it up. Okay. <laughs> I know. Oh, Dawn, what is it? That's Quicksilver by Melanie Berg. Oh, Quicksilver by Melanie Berg. <laughs> I do know that it's Knit and Heritage Sock and Malabrigo Sock. And the reason she is sporting that today is because we've started school and there's school colors. I've knit that on a size six. And on the frugalometer, the pattern got a two and the yarn got a three. So you did know that pattern. I didn't know the name of it. No, I've told you over and over, Dawn, you are the name queen. You, you can name drop patterns and people in yes. yarn. Yes. I, it makes I me. What's that? Sometimes I can. Sometimes um, something just escapes me. But. Well, I have no room on my iceberg for those penguins. So I rely upon you. You are the penguin on my iceberg for <laughs> names. I can tell you the name of that. I can't tell you if I have any money in my checking account. So I'm not so sure. <laughs> Why would that matter to you, Dawn? <laughs> <laughs> you know, my priorities are a little askew. They oh, are. And look what this is slipping tiles. <gasps> Woo! Dear, look at my, that. My dear Stephen West. Um, I knit that a while ago, but um, I just got it back. It was a shop model down at Magpie's Cottage for a while. So that is um, a paid for pattern on Ravelry. I used Kylie bamboo yarn. That is yarn that Joanne dyes. Um, I believe it's probably available either as a kit or individually um, on the Magpie's Cottage um, website. I followed the pattern exactly. What a, I think it may have been some of the first bamboo yarn I've ever knit with. And I'm telling you, it's just kind of light and drapey. So it looks drapey. I don't know colorways. Um, because the labels I had didn't have color. So Joanne would be able to help you with that. But that again, Slipping Tiles by Stephen West. You know, she gifted me the pattern and she gifted me the yarn. So that's on the frugalometer. That's a win-win. So, it is. Um, and bless you, Miss Joanne. That was very sweet and kind of you. Yeah. Gosh. So I did buy more of the gray that's in here to do maybe an upcoming hohe pattern. So... Gosh, I really like that yarn. And it's real subtle tonal, uh, like a silvery gray. So it looks very it. pretty from a distance. All right. Well, let's talk about what's on our needles. How about you? Who wants to go first? Let's let Miss Brianna go first. She is our featured guest in this episode. <laughs> Your featured guest is one thing to show today. Oh, and good. You had one finished object? <laughs> uh, no. Oh, okay. work in progress object. All right. Okay. Yeah. But I am really liking it. It's Vertices Unite by Stephen West, um, which all the ladies have been knitting and I'm a late comer, but I finished my first section last weekend and I was happy with that. It went very well. Mm -hmm. And then I started section two. And so you can see, I picked up the stitches and started doing my, um, let's see, my rapid turns and so I'm having a lot of fun with it I had to read the pattern twice though because um I wasn't doing my rapid turns right I would kept going back to the same five stitches at the end and wrapping and turning the same stitch and then going back and of course it didn't look right and so I ripped it back and um, now I'm doing it right um let's see and that's on a size four knitting needle I went down no a size five um, and I'm knitting it with Barnyard Knits um, yarn. This one, oh, I have all my ball bands mixed up, so I don't know what colors yet. But there's a this color and a this color. Oh, those are beautiful. And Absolutely. those are my section two colors. And then my section one colors are these two. Would you like some Ziploc bags to help you keep those um, balls of yarn with their ball bands, Miss Brianna? That's probably a good idea, but the ball bands are already pretty much gone. I have one left. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but this ball band goes with this ball of yarn, which is fun because I bought this when we were at our mini meetup. Um, the ladies at Elgin Networks helped me pick this color because I had these four and I needed a fifth color for Vertices Unite. And I just 
couldn't figure it out. So we went to Elgin Networks. I um, went with Joyce and um, we all picked out this and I'm really happy with it. It wouldn't have been um, something that I would have chose right off the shelf, but I think it's going to look great together. Yeah, I agree. So I'm enjoying this. And Miss Joyce is Miss Joyce from the Three Ply Podcast. Yes. Yeah. Oh, and Irene helped too. She and Miss Irene, absolutely. Yeah. Our dear, dear friends at Three Ply. So what's on your needles, Dawn? Well, um, I continue to work on Delphia. Let me show you that pattern. Delphia is a pattern by D. O'Keefe. Mm. It's a very simple crescent, as you can see. Um, two colors. I did not get oodles of time on this in the last two weeks, but I have started the striping sequence. So I just had to move to my 60 inch needle in order to um, show it without it curling. Let's see if I can get up a little bit closer. Very pretty. Yeah, I like it. So I'm doing um, another wider stripe of garter in this purple, and then I move to the lace section. So how nice to do a, a smaller shawl. I mean, it, it'll still be uh, a full two skeins, but when I'm used to doing the five, you know, Stephen West uh, size shawls, this one is moving quite quickly. I'm using Life in the Long Grass. This was yarn that my husband purchased for me at Simply Sock in Fort Wayne. And so you'll see the purple is just really a nice kind of royal purple. And then this one's a little harder to see. Maybe there's just tiny little speckles in there. I plan on following the pattern as written. Um, I'm using a US size five. I gave it a two on the frugalometer for the pattern, and I gave the um, yarn a $3 sign on the frugalometer, as that is yet on indie dye yarn. That's from, I believe that's an Irish yarn, if I recall correctly. So I'm enjoying it. Um, I, I tried to do this on Zoom, and I don't know about you guys, but once I get into a mode of just like doing garter, I just keep going and forget to read the pattern. <laughs> so then I know some sections are a little wonky and then I have to turn them back, but I am liking um, the pattern. That's a great pattern, I think, for a new shawl knitter. It's just some garter and some simple um, stockinette. And I'll see what the lace pattern looks like when I start it. Um, yeah, I, I'm loving it. Would and you it's, say it's well written for a new knitter, Dawn? It is well written. And what I like about um, D. O'Keefe, and this may be, the, this is the first D. O'Keefe I've um, knit. She, number one, does really good sales on her pattern. So I would watch for those. She does a well-written pattern and she also does some schematics. And so I like just simple schematics from time to time, if I'm not sure. And then her pattern is usually even in the written pattern as well on, as the lead page on Ravelry shows the shawl in um, different colors. And so, you know, sometimes you don't know if you want high contrast, if you want low contrast, would have variegated work. I like it that I can go there and just with her suggestions, help pick out some of the yarn. And as you guys know, I love high contrast. So um, that worked well for me. So yeah, I'm liking it. Um, maybe be done in a couple of weeks. <laughs> That's how much Zoom knitting I have. Um, so in my attention to detail. So what are you working on? Well, as you all know, I am monogamous. And as I told the ladies before we started recording, you can check episode 68 for all the details. But if you don't want to go back and watch it quickly, I am still working on Tenacity by Cold Comfort Knits. It is the knitting, uh, the aunties knit along. I am knitting it in Valley Yarns Charlemont base, which has a bit of wool and a bit of silk in the raspberry rose colorway. And I am knitting this on a US size two. Um, I did modify the pattern just a little bit when it came to the number of cast ons. And on the frugalometer, the yarn got $4 signs for me and it got $3 signs for the pattern. So um, I am just continuing to knit on it. What else is on you to, on your needles, ladies? Oh, I should say this. Well, um, 
Brian and I don't want to share our tenacities <laughs> <laughs> because somebody else is beating us already. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I don't think I am, Dawn. I know you say that, but I don't think I am. Well, <laughs> well for um, what it's worth, I measured mine. Oh, you did? Okay, so I'm, this is mine. I bet it's not much more than 40 inches, 45. Because, you know, when you showed it last night with Knitting with the Aunties, I think it's the same as mine. Right? Don't you think? No, you're longer. You're a lot longer. Look at the, what's hanging off your right arm. I'd rather not because it's called... <laughs> <laughs> I meant the fabric. <laughs> so mine just hit halfway. I'm at 50. Okay, and I've been knitting it since January. You've been knitting it since two weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, since the second to the last week in July. Okay. But there, that's what I would say I'm learning about monogamy. Um, I like the fact that I can easily and quickly see progress, right? Yep. Not that I'm racing because I don't really care when I finish it because I still have two skeins of yarn yet to add to it. But yeah. I just like that I can see some progress. Yeah, I just pulled my needles out. Ugh. Ooh. Um, so I'm using Regia <laughs> Premium Silk in the silver blue. It's it's German, so it's 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 spelled a little bit different. And um, I am using a US. I didn't even write it down. Did I have to drop down to a one point five? Yeah, I think I did. And then I modified by casting on fewer stitches in order to get the width that I wanted. I'll be using five skeins. Um, and you know, that's going to be right. If I just hit half, I am halfway on my third ball. Good. So that is going Good. to, yeah, I'm going to have to use all of it to hit a hundred or I'm going to have to stretch it and not tell you guys. <laughs> And, and as we've said before, though, there are no rules. Yes, do you're exactly right. Do, right? You know, I want a hundred inches. So that's the bottom line for me. I will do it till I have the, what I want. Mm -hmm. It's going to be beautiful. No doubt about it. Yeah. Yeah. I think um, it's going to have a very nice drape, quite oh, honestly. Absolutely. Miss Brianna, do you happen to have yours nearby or not? Um, I do. I do, but I'm ashamed of it. Don't. <laughs> it's not a race. Your Auntie Dawn keeps telling us that it's not a race. Okay. This is mine. It's wrinkled from being in the bag for a whole month. <laughs> um, and it's, I don't know, maybe 30, 30 inches. But this is my, can you read that? June stitch marker. <laughs> and if you notice, it's on the wire, it's on my cord. So. <laughs> Well, your July one will fit right next to it. That's well, yeah, your yeah. August. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it will. Oh my goodness. No, oh, no, but you know we put it on in the last day of the month, so we'll put July on, oh. hitting the last. Oh, day that's of right. July, so. Yeah, let's hope for that. Wait a minute, Dawn. We're in August, darling. She's got to put July on the wire. Oh yeah. And oh, then yeah. if she knits another row, she can put it on the August one row up. But that's what I said at the mini meetup when I, it was the end of July and I needed to put the July marker on and everyone was like, knit a couple rows. And I was like, I'm going to do it. <laughs> I did not, um, but I haven't had time today, but I will be the last one in place. Doesn't matter. All right. I really dropped oodles so, of stitches from enough to put that aside. So, um, Dawn, what else is on your needles? I have one more thing that I started. Okay. Look at this, you guys. Oh, oh, oh. oh my goodness. So this is Susanna. It's a cowl by Heather Booze of Booze Knits. Boo Knits. Wow, look at it. So the pattern calls for uh, fingering weight. And then, you know, pick an alternate color. It actually called for contrast color one, contrast color two. I decided to do the mohair dare. So I'm just using mohair. Now, okay, so I'm following the pattern. I have the right number of stitches. I have the right needle size. I think that gauge is loose. So if anybody has knit this, I would love to know if your gauge is loose. 
Now I did measure it last night after we got off with knitting with the Annie's and I'm on, I'm on spot for the measurement. Oh, but are you really? Yeah. I just think it looks kind of, but who knows? It's not done yet. The two yarns no. I picked. Oh, go ahead. The yarns I picked were direful yarn and the slasher sock. This is a very dark blue. If you can see that it's Ravenwood is the color. And then I bought also direful mystic, which is their um, mohair silk base. And um, this is called frostbite. Now I bought these two again when we were, um, was it the mini meetup weekend? I think you went over there after we all left. Oh, I you? did on Sunday. Yeah. And so I bought this to with the intent to do um, birds of a feather by Andrea Maori. But when I saw this other pattern, I thought, oh, I'm just going to use this. So I am following um, the recommended needle size. Let me get to that page so I don't give misinformation. It's a US four. It's a paid for pattern on Ravelry. I gave it $2 signs on the frugalometer and I gave the yarn $3 signs on the frugalometer. So what I was going to say, Dawn, is after we signed off last night, I got thinking about something. Do you remember when you started Tenacity and couldn't get Gage? And so you contacted the designer from Cold Comfort Knits and she reminded you and us that even though some yarn is classified as fingering, its plumpness could be different. And I'm wondering if that's happening with yours, which is why on even on a size four, that gauge looks more open. Because really on a four, it should be a little bit tighter, I would think. I think all my Stephen West are on a four, almost all of them. And, and you get that. So um, maybe it'll plump when I block it. Not sure. Also, definitely. I may. I wonder if I should have used three strands of mohair to get the same thickness as fingering weight. But anyway, I love mohair right now, as you know. So mm -hmm. don't wear black when you're knitting with mohair. <laughs> so that is all that is on my needles. All right. Miss Brianna, do you have anything, darling, else on your needles? No. Okay. Nothing on my needles. Our next segment. What's around your neck? No, sorry. <laughs> What's off your needles? Oh, see, this is why I cannot be in charge of little things like this. What's off your needles? I would not be able to find those little thought bubbles. Oh, I have them right here. <laughs> Gosh, I can find what's on your sock machine. I can find, oh, I'm, oh, do you have any, oh, do you, Dawn, have any Kofos? I do. <gasps> oh, for oh. those of you who don't know, a Kofo for the Frivolous and Frugal podcast is cast on and finished object in between episodes. Impress us, would you? Oh, what is that? The last episode I showed, this is the bandana pearl. No, the bandana cowl by um, Pearl Soho. It's a free pattern on Ravelry. I did it last um, month in some pinks and blues. This is that um, Chapel Zour Ball that is like seven little skeins of yarn that um, gradiate. So I held it triple last time, three strands, because it called for an Aran weight in the pattern. I just thought that fabric was too bulky and it just didn't create a long enough cowl with the yarn that was given. That set of five, or excuse me, I think there's seven little balls of yarn in there is 100 grams. So after talking with the ladies at Silver Thimble in Green Bay, um, we wondered what it would be like just to hold two strands. So that's what I did. And that's what that 100 gram skein gives you. So I literally started with the white just for the ribbing around. And then I kept adding colors. And as I ran out of one color, I just picked up the next and I ended with the solid black. Some modifications I made to the pattern. If you look at the pattern, they do not have ribbing at the top or at the bottom. They just have garter and it rolls. I don't know. I just love the look of ribbing. So let me put this on. It's better than the last one. I still wouldn't say it's perfect, but um, I pinky swear I'm not doing it again. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. Uh, look, it looks like I have wings. 
It does kind of, but I'm looking at your cowl. Okay. So I'm thinking wings, maxi pads, and then I go to places I shouldn't go. Okay. You went there very quickly too. That's, that's a oh, red flag. Black, so that probably doesn't help. But yeah, that fits a little bit better around the neck. I think it's a little bit longer. Um, yeah. So what we're going to do is we're just going to do this as a fun knit along with our open knitting in September at Silver Thimble. It's not gonna be a class because it's a very simple pattern, but I did follow the um, gauge. I'm trying to think here. It's on a US 10 because it was written for air and weight. Now I like this now that I put it on. So, yeah. So you're, you're pleased with those modifications. Yes. If you look on my Ravelry project page, I put this one and then I put the other one I knit on top of it. So you could do a size comparison. I already took that one to the shop, so I couldn't show you today. Yeah, that is nice. Very nice. Okay. And then I have a, I have a hoe. You have a hoe, a half finished, finished object. object. Okay. Ooh. Let's see. Oh, is that the Get Shorty Sock by Miss Irene? That is exactly what that is. Oh, yeah. look at those fun colors. Penny, you gave me this yarn. It's one of the lollipop yarn. And mm -hmm. I think maybe you took a trip or you were teaching. I don't know if it's when you went to Nebraska or when you went to um, Knit Pearl Hunter's home knit shop. Oh, Knitting Temptations in Dublin, Ohio? I don't remember where. But um, it is lollipop yarns. It's a set. So you get the, um, I think it's a hundred gram ball of self-striping and then you get the contrasting. Um, it's called booty call. <laughs> All right. The black's not going to show, but this design up here, Irene, was brilliant. It is a nice little pattern for the cuff and it is the strong heel. The first time I've ever done that. Um, I wore them around a little bit. I only have one done, but I wore it around a little bit and I really like the feel of it. Do you? Yeah, so I would highly recommend this pattern. Um, Irene uh, graciously gifted it to us. So on the Frugalometer, it's a one and you gifted me the yarn. So that's a win-win. So <clears throat> I generally don't have second um, sock syndrome. So I will just start the next one. Um, because that cuff starts a little pattern, I'm gonna need some concentration time for that. Um, but I just thought the pattern was very well written as far as the directions on how to do the um, strong heel. Now, also, if you watch their latest episode, she called for test knitters. Oh, she did. Oh, so no. that would be episode 72 of the three ply podcast. Yeah, so she is asking for test knitters. So she obviously has another sock design coming. So wonderful. Mm -hmm. So those of you out there who enjoyed test knitting, Please drop Miss Irene and Irene Designs is her name on Ravelry. Drop her a line and let her know you're interested. Okay. And let her know you heard about it on Frivolous and Frugal. Hey, look at this one, guys. Another finished object. Oh, look goodness. at you. Oh, this is Cowl Mizzou. <laughs> and the uh, designer is Laura Dobatz. This is what I saw when I was on vacation at the Four Pearls in Florida. You guys, you've got to knit this one. Look at this, how it lays. It is fantastic. Okay. The yarn is fantastic too. Emma's yarns in the singles and the colorways are fun. The lighter blue is called Mom Jeans oh. and the darker blue is called Denim. Um, 50 grams of each. I did buy 100 gram skein, so I have enough to do another one or incorporate that into another pattern. It's on a US five. I gave it $2 signs for the cost of the pattern. I did, but it is on Ravelry. And then for the yarns, I gave it $3 signs. Um, four Pearls Yarn in Winter Haven, Florida um, is the home for Emma's yarn. So they were so delightful and um, yeah. I, I think it's growing on me, Dawn. Yeah. And by the way, that is very um, flattering for you. I like, don't you think, Miss Brianna? I like the way it comes down to a V. Yeah. And I like the way it hugs your shoulders. Mm -hmm. I like it. Yeah, Cowl Mizzou. And I think the gal who designed it's from Kalamazoo. Oh, fun. Yeah. 
And on her pattern, um, she shows it in just a, a speckled yarn too, not changing yarn colors. But that's a pretty easy to follow pattern, um, intuitive. Um, yeah, it would be interesting to see if I end up teaching a class on that. Okay, and I have one more. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so this, what is that one, Dawn? This is another Eureka cowl. I did it last time in that um, ribbon yarn. Yes. Um, Splash by Lang. This is um, Queensland yarn. The base is Katmandu. It's Aran weight. It's merino cashmere silk. Okay. Oh, now, here's the problem. And again, I, the other ones at the shop, I wish I could show you. This was way too big compared to the other one. Because the other one, I love the fit of it. But oh, did you, did you really? So do you see how big this is? So I think I'd have to like tuck it in behind. Again, I love the way these, these are laying as far as over the shoulders. Um, yeah. So the, what I'm gleaning, Dawn, I'm just trying to look for something. You like a tighter fitting cowl around the neck. I do, I think. And then I love it when it lays flat. Okay. And what I love about cowls is they're gonna stay put. Now, we've, um, at, again, at, at Silver Thimble, we're gonna do it in three yarns so that people have a choice. So the first one I did, which I ended up loving, was the one, again, that was in um, Splash Yarn. Now, Katmandu's much thicker, um, luxurious yarn as far as its content. And I put the bobbles on this one. I didn't put bobbles on the first one because the yarn was so busy. Oh, there they are. But I'm not consistent with my bobbles. The pattern's well-written, but I, they change in size and I don't think they're supposed to. <laughs> now another, um, Karen at Silver Thimble is doing it in Sueno Tweed. Oh my goodness. Oh. Now, here's the other thing I would say about this. Lovely yarn. I couldn't do it in one skein. So I had to buy the second skein. I ran out right here in this garter or the stockinette before the ribbing started. So if you wanted to do one skein, I would end the cowl right after this garter ridge. Okay. Um, so if you wanted a one skein. So I, I bet I went higher on this yarn because it was a little more expensive. Um, I gave it a three on the frugalometer, but... Um, I had to tap into that second skein. This is a shop model too um, for silver thimble. So it will go there today and that's where it will live. Mm. But it's kind of fun to see the same pattern in three markedly different yarns. Um, when you see it on the, um, let's see if I have it here. When you see it on the pattern, um, it is done in a very thick Brooklyn tweed yarn like this. So Yep, that is all that is off my needles. Oh, that's it? Yeah. I'm surprised. You, I, I would expect at least six, and you only did four. You always know when it's back to school Zoom meetings for six hours a day, don't you? You can get a lot in. <laughs> mm -hmm. Obviously. All right. Well, we are now on to Miss Brianna. What are you learning? What are you learning in your knitting adventures right now? Um, well, the thing that I've been learning, and I guess it's already been a month, but at the Mandy Meetup, I think I learned what you guys talk about all the time, the love of the knitting community, because it was such a blessing to be around like-minded individuals who have, you know, they're just good people. They love each other. They want to talk to each other, find out what they're knitting. Um, so supportive, so kind. Um, and I think that's just the knitting community. Every single person there, I think I enjoy talking to, meeting. Um, and as an introvert, that says a lot. <laughs> um, and, you know, even just with the ladies um, helping me with my Vertices Unite and picking my color, going to Elgin Knits. Um, I don't know. It was just like an amazing weekend. Um, and I think I just walked away thinking, wow, what a cool community. Um, and just made me think of that phrase that you say, for the love of the knitting community. Um, and so I know it's our, it's been a month and, um, but I don't know, I, that still sticks with me because I think we have something special and I think it's great. So I'm just learning that all over again. I don't think you should apologize for that by saying it's only been a month, Miss Brianna, you are marinating in that. 
I mean, you, it really has filled your cup, right? Mm -hmm. So I think that's great. You're not taking it glibly. You're not taking it for granted. I think it's wonderful. I, I really do. I think it's great that yes. you've gotten to know that at a young age. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Very cool. What are you learning, Miss Penny? Um, I'm learning that I should probably not be knitting while, um, while I'm on Zoom because I'm going to have to tink. Um, actually, what I'm learning is something that I learned from the Jedi on Star Wars. <laughs> and so if you are a pop culture fanatic, um, I am surrounded by them. So I am learning uh, all about and experiencing Jomo. And Jomo, J-O-M-O, is the joy of missing out. And when the Jedi warriors are training, they are learning from Yoda and all their other mentors how you have an, um, a choice in how you look at certain things. You can either accept what's happening to you right now with acceptance and knowing that you have to separate yourself for training, or you can just resign yourself to the fact that you can't participate. And in resignation, there's usually bitterness, resentment, jealousy, or envy. But when you accept that you are in a certain place for a certain time, that acceptance breeds joy. And I am learning the JOMO of monogamy. And knitting just one project at a time, being very content there, being um, pleasantly content, not yearning to do other things. And I have a hunch that this experiment, for those of you who are first time watchers, this is a year long experiment for me to only knit on one project at a time. I have a hunch it's going to yield some very nice fruit and some very valuable lessons that not only I can learn within the knitting world, but I can apply to my life. And so I think Jomo could also apply to perhaps maybe being, um, accepting the fact that you may not be able to go to all sorts of knitting events or conferences. It may be accepting the fact that you can't buy the luxurious yarn that others buy and being able to just accept that for what it is and enjoy it without malice, without, you know, envy, jealousy, self-pity or whatever. So that's what I'm learning. That is powerful. I, I have to say, um, I am pleasantly surprised. I did not expect this. So when I went into the experiment, I don't know what I expected to be honest with you, but this has been a delightful byproduct. So anyway. Yeah. And I am so at the other end of that spectrum. So I want to know what the latest patterns are. I want to know what the new yarns are. Um, I chase bright, shiny things. And so to slow down and enjoy, I, I love every minute I knit. So I think I enjoy knitting, but um, my eye is always on, you know, what's trending or what's happening. And, and I think when we have FOMO, Dawn, I think you and I might've talked about this before, Part of it is you want that sense of belonging that Miss Brianna just mentioned. Yeah. Right. So FOMO keeps you right in the midst of everybody's conversation and you can relate to everything and you feel like you're a part of something much bigger than yourself. So I'm sure there are times and places for that in our lives also. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm not saying one is better than the other. I think it is important, and Miss Brianna will um, probably agree with this based on the chapter of the book we are discussing right now, that it doesn't matter where you're at, if you're on the end of FOMO or on the end of JOMO, delight, satisfaction, and um, contentment come when you're content with where you're at. Yeah. Regardless of the reasons or the circumstances behind where you are, you're content. So therefore you accept it and you make the most of it. And I think it may be the first time we talked about Jedi on the podcast. Oh, my sons are going to be so proud of me. And the fact that I knew that Yoda was their teacher. Oh, please. It's, <laughs> I'm just vying for mother of the year if you want the truth. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> so 
from this point on, we have some housekeeping. So if you don't want to hear about what's happening at Frivolous and Frugal, feel free to turn us off now and join us for episode 70 in a couple of weeks. But right now, we're just going to cover some of the things that are going on at Frivolous and Frugal. First of all, we are very near, based on Dawn's investigation, to hitting 2,000 subscribers. So once we have 2,000 subscribers on YouTube, we are going to have a huge giveaway. So stay tuned for that. We have several CALs going on, and we kind of like, I think, one of our superpowers is we like to give gifts. And so we have another giveaway coming up on YouTube where we will draw someone from that YouTube discussion thread. And that is scheduled for episode 68. I'm sorry, 70. So it could be that we have a clash of giveaways. Could be, I don't know, we'll have to see. But in order to be selected for the giveaway on YouTube, you need to post a response to the following question. What is your favorite knitting technique and why? Now that can be a single stitch. It can be um, a group of stitches such as cables. Uh, you might like just a twisted stitch. You might like twisted rib. You might like steaking. You might like seeming. It doesn't matter. Share with us what your favorite technique is and why, uh, why, and we will randomly select a winner in episode 70. Next, we will have another giveaway in our Ravelry Finish Fix Flip or Frog It Cal during episode 72. So if you're interested in entering that, Make sure you post and get active. And if you're not sure what you're doing works for that cow, let me just let you in on a secret. It does. So we're taking anything and everything, right, Dawn? Absolutely. Um, and if you need inspiration, don't hesitate another minute. Leave us right where, you, where we're at. Put us on pause. Go over to that thread and take a look because you will be amazed at some of the beautiful projects our participants are sharing. Next, we need to announce um, that we only have another week left for our August hat cow. Our pattern this month is After the Frost by Melanie Berg. So then during our next episode, we will post our hat pattern for the month of September. We'll choose a winner from our August participants in a couple of weeks. Our August ornament cow is the pattern Christmas Baubles by Chris Slade. And again, you have about a week to get something in that thread before we go on to the September pattern. And just for the record, I realize I did not put these two patterns up in the list in the Ravelry threads. I'll do that tonight when I'm posting show notes. Um, also, we want to say that our Vertices Unite Cal will come to a, an end kind of at the end of August. At the end of August, it will transition on September 1st to our West Along with the blessings of Stephen West, might I add, Dawn's <laughs> dear Stephen West. And we are going to transition from just Vertices Unite to any Stephen West pattern um, you would like to start knitting. Now, I'm sure this is going to be an ongoing knit along because he comes out with some just stunning patterns. Yes. So for right now, are you ladies comfortable with not putting an end date on that? Can we just make like an instantaneous decision? Okay, so <laughs> it's open. Um, we don't know how we're gonna give gifts yet, but just stay tuned for that, okay? And we are looking forward to seeing what you post. If you are someone who really does like the knitting community and you enjoy knitting on Zoom sessions, then we're the place to be because every Tuesday night, Dawn hosts an open Zoom knit night. And that link is in our Ravelry thread with the same name. Feel free to join between the hours of 6 and 8 Central Standard Time. Um, we would encourage you, if you're doing one of our knit-alongs, to bring that project. And we would also say, if you're not doing one of our knit-alongs, join anywhere. If we don't mind. Just whenever you're knitting. And even if you don't want to knit, if you want to crochet, do cross-stitch, do embroidery, join us. Because, Dawn, how would you describe those Tuesday nights? You know, it's 
it is interesting to see the different patterns, but also just the discussion is amazing. And we're learning about new indie dyers, new podcasts. Um, I don't, you know, it's just a warm group of women. So far, it's just been women. We welcome anybody. Um, yeah, it's, it's, again, one of those things you walk away from thinking, wow. Um, and I, I try to take notes and I use quotation marks. I maybe post three things <laughs> that we talked about. Um, inevitably, I forget to save the chat. But um, yeah, lovely group. And again, people come and go. So please don't feel like you need to stay um, the entire two hours or whatever time we're knitting. It's just been fun to get reacquainted with some people I haven't seen for a while. And um, yeah, I would encourage you to join if uh, you ever have a Tuesday evening where you're looking for something to do. Wonderful. And speaking of Zoom opportunities, we have a virtual knit night that we offer on the second Saturday of the month. So if you would like to knit between seven and nine central standard time, join us for our September 11th virtual knit night. We have an overarching theme and that is choose your own level of participation. If you just want to tune in and never contribute to the conversation, that's fine. If you're someone who would like to share what you're doing, we offer and invite you to share what's on or off your needles. And again, like Dawn said, we try to take notes and then post them after these events, trying to capture some of the pattern names and fiber names as well as knit shops and or accoutrements and or tools of the trade. And we also then have an overarching question at the end that we'll pose if we lack for discussion. That doesn't always happen. Um, our participants have always been very good about sharing. And might I add, I don't know of another group of women or knitters, I'm gonna say knitters, uh, uh, fiber artisans. I don't know of another group of people who are more encouraging who are more courteous, who are more thoughtful than the group that we have. And it is two hours of nothing but knitting, knitting only. So you are saturated with oodles of ideas and inspiration. If evenings don't work for you, then please feel free to join us on September 25th for our virtual morning knit together. That is from 10 to noon Central Standard Time. Once again, same thing, choose your own level of participation. I post the link for Zoom in the Ravelry thread about an hour before the event starts in the event that someone has technical difficulties. If you are not on Ravelry and you would still like to join us, email me in the show notes, you'll find my email, email me and I will send you an email with the link in it. Once again, about an hour before the event. Now, here's something else we need to let you know. Two things. Since we have gone to knitting, uh, I'm sorry, recording just every other week, we are recording on the morning of our morning virtual knit togethers. So I may not have that open exactly an hour before the event starts because it's a back-to-back -back and we try to transition as quickly as possible. Secondly, just a heads up, we are not going to have the October knit night. And we'll remind you of that again in September because I will be um, visiting my son and daughter-in-law and their children that weekend. So I'm going to devote that weekend to them. So those are just two ways that you can get involved on Zoom as well as with our Tuesday evening knit togethers. Have I missed anything so far, ladies, when it comes to events? I don't think so. Well, I think then that makes it time for honorable mentions. Woo, we have a couple of honorable mentions, don't we, Dawn? We do. All right. Would you like to um, give a shout out to Miss Angela? Yes. Yeah, so um, Angela Beyer, one of the viewers of the podcaster and one of our biggest cheerleaders, she also helps us with the editing um, of our videos from time to time, uh, lives in Los Angeles, California, but came to visit her parents in Milwaukee. So um, several of us from uh, Magpies um, drove down and we met her to knit for an afternoon. And we just sat at a coffee shop and knit for like four hours. Um, Pam and Cindy and Miss Roxanne were able to join us. So I will insert a picture again, if I can figure out how to do that, which to date, I have not figured out how to do. Um, we will do that. Angela, it was a thrill to meet you. 
you're as warm in person um, as you are on Zoom. You're beautiful, you're a fearless knitter and so encouraging. Um, it was just so, I don't know, you can you leave there. Of course, I had to call Penny right away. <laughs> um, all the way home. Um, it, was, it was just a delightful afternoon and uh, honorable mentions to Miss Angela. Also, thank you. I wish I could have been there, darling. I'll catch you next time, hopefully. Speaking of inserting pictures, um, you have heard Miss Brianna and Dawn and I talk even this episode about our mini meetup in Chicago several weeks ago. What a delight it was. Now, because um, we are somewhat limited in our skills and abilities, we have not put anything together to reflect that weekend. So we are inviting all of you to go and view, watch the entire episode of um, the Three Ply Podcast. It is episode 72. They have a great intermission that is a collection of pictures from the weekend. Please go there, watch their podcast and subscribe because we're hoping that you'll be able to see just how smoothly we all just fit together. And Miss Irene and Miss Joyce and Miss Angie, I hope you know how much not only we love you, but we appreciate you. Thank you for sharing that not only with your viewers, but with our viewers. And we just can't do this often enough for the record. So thank you. And then also we have an honorable mention. Uh, we have Miss Mary. I think she's Wildfire 5-5 five, five in Ravelry. Is that it, Dawn? I can't remember. Yeah. But Miss Mary comes from northern Wisconsin, and she had her husband turn yarn bowls for us. Are these not gorgeous? I don't even know your name, fella, but I would give you a hug if you were standing right here. Miss Mary, thank you so much for thinking about us. These are beautiful, breathtakingly beautiful. So thank you. We um, appreciate your graciousness with us. And I can't think of any other honorable mentions. Can you? Yep, not today. All right. Now, we cannot possibly end an episode without sharing what our dear faithful sister Nikki would say to us. And for those of you who are first time viewers, Nikki is a golfer. I mean, an avid golfer. She, her, golf to her is like knitting to us. And yet that sister has embraced knitting. It is amazing. Mm -hmm. And so every week she just gives us a tidbit to chew on. And so this week, um, I forgot to write it down. So I am going to ask Dawn if you would just entertain for two seconds. I have to pull up the Word document. It's right here. Um, I did not write it in our show notes. We had some technical difficulty with our show notes. I don't know what happened this week, Dawn. We kind of got messed up there. Well, uh, I tried to do them and <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> Well, no, it's not you. I even had problems with my printer and I am opening up the document right now. So the minute it pops up, here it is. It is very few things in life bring you pure happiness more than accomplishing something you thought you could not do. Wow. Is that not profound? That is very good. Nothing brings more happiness and accomplishing something you didn't think you could do. So keep that in mind as you're slogging through a challenging pattern or frogging something. Um, <laughs> the end product makes it worth it. So thanks, sis, for your words of wisdom. We appreciate it. And it's that time for us to call a close to today's episode. And all three of us and four, including Nikki, are hoping that your week is a sweet twist of the frivolous and frugal Thanks so much for joining us. And we look forward to seeing you in episode 70. Have a great week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.